Hello friends and welcome to another edition of Transformational Astrology. I'm Henry Seltzer and we want to talk about the full the new moon that's coming up on February 9th, which is on Friday, coming right up uh, the end of this week. So let's take a look at the chart. And you should be able to see it here in the Time Passages software. <clears throat> and we're doing this uh, based on the natural chart of for Aries at the beginning and so on. The actual rising of this uh, chart, rising sign of this chart is Cancer, uh, depending on where we are. So we're in California, happens to be Cancer rising. Um, it would be different for different parts of the country or Europe, so we're going to use just the natural chart. That's the way we always look at these. And <clears throat> when we look at that, also we can see that there is this concentration of planets in this third between, thir third of the circle I'm saying, between Venus and Uranus uh, in trine with each other. So that's called a cluster, we list it that way, uh, leading Venus, and that is the, the cluster format uh, <laughs> Form that's here. But, you know, actually so interesting, um, these other two planets that are named only recently, Haumea and Makimaki, named as dwarf planets, uh, the only officially named planets um, besides Eris that are in the Kuiper Belt that we're not normally using in astrology. You know, we're starting to use Eris in astrology now, which is this sign here. We are also, of course, using Pluto. Um, Pluto is very important in charts. <clears throat> and, you know, at some point it occurred to me that um, when we had these new planets declared by the astronomers that, you know, we have uh, a planet that's arguably bigger and more important in the Kuiper Belt than Pluto, namely Eris, and it had to be important in charts, and that's proven to be the case. Um, so I've been pioneering studies in these new planets, and actually um, Haumea and Makimaki, turns out, <clears throat> are also very important in chart work. They have to do with connection to nature, man's connection to nature, our own individual connection to nature. Uh, people that have these prominent are usually very connected to nature, uh, seek nature for solace, um, like to be in nature maybe to the exclusion of even being elsewhere <laughs> in, in the world, in the uh, civilized world, so to speak. And uh, uh, Mea is more about just that connection, but Maki Maki has to do with an activist agenda. And it always has to do also with kind of a principles of natural law, which is right action, right relationship, and also telling the truth. Um, so I'm, I'm finding this very invariably, and I think it's so interesting in this new moon configuration, the fact that they are prominent by being on the other side of the chart from the rest of these planets. There's also a Yod, very interestingly, a forming Yod from Saturn and Jupiter by inconjunct in each case to this position of Maki Maki. <clears throat> and in fact, um, this is a long sextile from Saturn to Jupiter. Sat Jupiter just recently stationed on December 30th to direct motion. It's moving a little slowly still. So they, they only grow by about a degree or two in the next two weeks until the full moon. And then at that point, Jupiter will be at 10 degrees, 24. Uh, I think it'll be exactly the same as, as Maki Maki in terms of degree and minute that in conjunct from Jupiter will be at 10. Jupiter will be at 10 of uh, Taurus. And so that, it, it actually becomes exact, this Yod from Saturn and Jupiter to Maki Maki becomes exact in the full moon. So I think that's very interesting over this period of time. There will be, I believe, uh, an activist uh, agenda that becomes more and more pronounced. Of course, we're seeing the problems become more and more pronounced. And so I, I do think it makes perfect sense. It only makes sense that we really pay attention to these things that we all individually start to act, which is the province also of Eurus. You know, Eurus is about... Uh, coming to what you cannot not do, coming to what your deepest goals and realizations are, your deepest principles, and acting upon them. And that opens you up and frees you up because you're actually doing what you believe, what you, what you really understand to be your fundamental truth. And so it's so freeing. So that's the, the study of these new planets is just so important. And they're prominent in these uh, couple of um, new moons. The <clears throat> Haumea has been square to Pluto, 
recently in, in uh, since February actually so quite a while and the, the principle <clears throat> that uh, how mayor represents of telling the truth has really been in the national news lately because the consequences of not telling the truth have been the subject of many court cases I mean uh, especially with the Trump administration which of course <laughs> not known for telling the truth anyway um, <clears throat> getting back to the chart itself so we do have this Aquarius lineup, including we have Mars uh, close enough so that we're going to throw it into the Aquarius. I should explain about that. Um, <clears throat> we, we have a, a factor in the time passages software that we can put Mars. It's called the five degree rule. We're using three degrees as the default here, but it's within three degrees. So it's in that next house. And um, that's actually a, a feature of the time passage software that we can apply that kind of a house margin. Uh, and put it in the house where it really belongs because it's conjunct the cusp of the house. So even for the full sign uh, houses uh, like we're using here, <clears throat> we can have that feature working. I could show you the display option on that, I guess. Um, you go to preferences in the software, go to display options, and you can actually, uh, here you can see the house margin is three, and you can apply it to whole sign houses or not. If we don't, then it winds up back in Capricorn. But if we do, then it's in, that's why um, it's lined up with these other planets. <clears throat> so we have quite an Aquarius lineup and you could count Mars in that. And it's getting close to Pluto as well. So Mars, Pluto is one factor here, very important. Um, <clears throat> another is that Mars is actually sextile to Neptune. So we have quite a bit of Mars. Um, our actions are, uh, really motivated by a higher purpose um, at this time. Uh, square as well to um, to Eris in, in uh, 24 degrees of Aries. So it's a very strong Mars in this whole configuration of the new moon. And I think it's a powerful new moon. I think we're going to notice a lot of energy, um, a lot of energy for social needs with Aquarius and energy for um, finding our own way in all of that. <clears throat> you know, I think that's the challenge of our times, is really to figure out how we can fit ourselves into the picture. It doesn't mean we're going to run for office. It doesn't mean we're going to be leading a demonstration, but uh, maybe joining a demonstration, um, articulating what we fundamentally believe that's so important with Eris. And it's so important right now, you know, that we don't just wander and feel like we're at the mercy and we can't understand where it goes and so just escape, you know, or whatever. No, we have to plug ourselves in. It's such a crucial time for this whole culture. I believe that we really have to plug ourselves in and find out where we, um, where we stand. You know, Eris is what you absolutely, um, your deepest principles, what you, what you believe, what you absolutely cannot not do is what ERA stands for. And it's prominent right now, so it's something to think about. Of course, the other thing that we will be definitely uh, engaged in, and it's been in these last few moons, new moons, is um, the fact that uh, ir uh, the Uranus has been prominent with all of these. And right now it's even more so because it's perfectly square. So um, because 20 degrees of, Qu of Aquarius, 19 degrees of Taurus, so very strong, you can see the big red lines, very strong in this new moon. We will be um, probably seeing more surprises, more surprise events. We say also intuition and unexpected enlightenment with Uranus. So this is just kind of keeping an eye on things, trying to see where we are in our own lives, see what the story is that we're telling ourselves for everything that we're doing with ourselves, getting a chance to make a different perspective because um, Uranus gives us the opportunity to really to step outside of, our, uh, of where we're um, just kind of going through the motions and step outside from that and kind of see things in a different way, a different perspective. So that's an important factor too. We have prominent Neptune, prominent Uranus both, kind of a spiritual dimension to this new moon as well as the other factors in it. And we want to be also <clears throat> thinking about um, the way planets connect not only by longitudinal aspects but in parallel and it turns out in the software we can see the parallels by right click so if I right click on Venus we see that there's a parallel between Venus and Mars and it's also contraparallel to Maki Maki 
uh, and we see how close they are, um, maybe the easiest way is to go to the declinations and display them. So in this declination map, here's Venus, here's Mars, here's the parallel between them, and it's within a tenth of a degree. Uh, and then with Venus also, uh, and we have it with uh, Maki Maki, that is also a tenth of a degree. So this is again, and by the way, um, the Sun is also contraparallel to Haumea, and that's a tenth of a degree. So <laughs> uh, it, does mention, it does bring up that the personal planets are connected to these also um, new planets. And so I think, I think they really are prominent right now in the zeitgeist. We'll be thinking about <clears throat> what we can do in terms of trying to establish a more um, moral basis for moving ahead. It's not just a materialistic world as the zeitgeist tends to go, you know, that's kind of where the culture is at, but that's not where we as, or need to be at as individuals. You know, there's a way that we can take uh, our own sense of what's right and what's not and apply it and start to think about how that really factors in and think about how we can make a difference. So I think that's very important. Um, so that's most of the message I had for you, I think, is that the, not, not to fail to pay attention to these new planets when we're looking at charts, and especially um, right now, because they are prominent, and I think we can, we can look at it in your individual chart, too. And by the way, <clears throat> Time Passages software has interpretations for all of these, so you can see how that square might be playing out. Um, let's see, this is um, Pluto square Haumea, which has been since February, as I say. And you can get an interpretation for that by clicking on it. So, um, and their house position is another thing, of course, in the eighth house, in this case. So let's see. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to say about this new moon. It's a very powerful new moon. A lot of Mars. There's relationship stuff because there is the contra parallel. I'm sorry, the parallel between Mars and Venus is quite close. Uh, that was what I was mentioning when I went to the other um, display of the, of the declinations. Again, if we right-click, um, the declination of Venus is 21 and a half, it's 21 degrees, 29 minutes, and Mars is 21 degrees, 32 minutes. So it's very, very close together. And what do we make out of that except that there is a lot of relationship um, factors what we'll be thinking about. Mars is very strong. <clears throat> Our activities may be conditioned by um, these, inner, uh, you know, the fact that it's conjunct Pluto, there's a depth to it, there's a depth of passion. We have to be careful not to um, go overboard with it uh, because there can be uh, too much anger. Um, think twice when we have those strong emotions coming out. We don't want to have the emotions um, we might regret something we might say and therefore regret. We want to kind of stop <laughs> and count to 10, you know, those kind of things. But just being aware of the factors that are in the sky right now, with well, the new moon's always uh, strong and it will be for 30 days, you know, for the next 30 days. So this is what we want to be thinking about during the re remainder of the month and on into March, is that there's quite a lot of intensity in the, in the sky and the zeitgeist and it's probably pretty obvious uh, of that, uh, but just to realize that there's an astrological correlation to it. It's also a thoughtful time. Um, we have Mercury not only in a wide conjunction with Pluto, but it's quite closely square to Jupiter. And so Mercury with Jupiter um, it just Im 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 makes the, the thought process to be prominent. Um, it can be... Uh, a little bit too much, you know, you can be overthinking uh, with, with Jupiter involved, try to, you know, be aware of that and, and have some caution about the thoughts and have some caution about where we're going with things, but, but still let our imagination run, you know, I think it's important to be able to see things from different angles, to be able to, um, you know, let, our, let ourselves really, you know, believe in your own intuition, and that's important right now too. So that's it. Let me go back to the other view. 
And just to close, um, it's a thoughtful time. It's an important time. It's a time for watching our actions. Uh, we may have a tendency to overdo with our actions and the blood of Mars right now, so be careful about that. And just try to stay true to yourself. You know, it's so important these days with things kind of running amok and the civilization is really, I mean, it has to be turned around. The situation with um, climate change is so important. We really need to keep paying attention to that, keep paying attention to the things that matter, you know, really taking care of each other, uh, trying to get to a better place where we're kind, you know, the, the, where the culture has more uh, equality in it. Just those, those 60s, um, 1960s ideals are still in the culture as, I, as guideposts, you know, and, and I think we can, we can do better with um, actualizing them if we really all try. And we have to keep trying. That's really all we got. We've got to keep doing it. So that's it for now. Um, we'll talk soon. Take care with all that and best of luck. Bye now.